Welcome to Kenya Snakebite. My name is uh, Geoffrey Maranga. I work as a senior pathologist and um, our work mainly is uh, we are trying to achieve the new antivenom in Kenya and uh, to get that we need to house animals where we extract venom and the venom is used to get the new antivenom. So we have a collection of about 12 species of uh, medically important snakes housed here. Uh, generally in Kenya we have about 126 species of snakes but uh, most of them can't do harm. The problem is that uh, most of our people don't understand which are venomous, which are not venomous. Generally in Kenya we have uh, about 126 different species of snakes which are known. Uh, 26 are known to be venomous or can cause a harm, while about 93 are not known to cause any harm. Um, most of our collections, we have considered uh, snakes of medical importance, but we have a majority which are not dangerous. Uh, there is a big problem to identify venomous snakes from non-venomous because uh, there is no simple way you can tell this snake is uh, harmless or this snake is, is dangerous. And that is why we recommend that uh, once a person has been beaten, he straight away moved to the nearest hospital, then they can diagnose the, the case. If it, is, uh, it, if it is showing any life-threatening symptom, then we classify that one as a venomous. And if it is not showing any life-threatening symptoms, we can show that we can classify that one as non-venomous. So another thing is that uh, most snakes, for their defense, they are known to mimic one another. That is, uh, you can find a harmless snake looking similar to a venomous snake. You can find a red snake, but it's not dangerous uh, because it is uh, within the surrounding of, uh, let's say, a red spitting cobra. It mimic the red spitting cobra, probably to scare away it is uh, predators or enemies so that they don't uh, kill them or take them for food, yeah. Equally, snakes play important role in our ecosystem. Majorly, they are meant to reduce famines or rodents which destroy our crops. And uh, on the other hand, as everybody understands, they are also very dangerous because they are known to do harm. Whenever you provoke them, the only mechanism they can defend with themselves is to bite you. And some of them have uh, uh, venomous, uh, have um, strong venom that is known to kill a person or cause severe damage. In house, we have about 63 uh, medically important snakes housed here, and of which we have about 10 puffers, African puffers. We have one Gaboon viper, we have four carpet vipers. We have uh, four Egyptian cobras, we have about nine uh, red spitting cobras, we have three black necked spitting cobras, we have uh, two large brown spitting cobras, we have uh, eight black mambas, we have uh, eight green mambas, then we have uh, nine boomschlang, we have three uh, twig snakes, and then we have uh, one small scale burrowing asp. Then we have uh, one uh, East African gutter snake. So to begin with uh, mm -hmm. our display, we do have uh, African puff adders. These are the most common snake that is almost widely distributed in Kenya and Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. So we find them almost to every part of Kenya. They are highly venomous and their venom is known to kill people. It is a combination of cytotoxic venom. So with this one, it is called a puff adder because whenever you approach close to it, it is known to puff to alert you of their presence. That is why you can hear this sound coming on. Yeah. So we do have a, a boomschlang. Boomschlang is a highly venomous snake that has a hemotoxic kind of venom that affect mainly blood. And this one is, the bites are not that uh, common, but once they bite you, they are known to kill as well. We have a twig snake or vine snake, all these three. 
So these are as well highly venomous, but uh, good things, they are not that aggressive and also they are not widely disputed and hence we don't have major cases with these ones. Uh, we have, uh, all these are puff adders, then we have uh, other boom slangs on this side. So in the cages you can see we have uh, basins. The basins we are trying to modify uh, this uh, captive area to be like a, a natural setup. So the basins is actually to give them privacy so that uh, they are not much stressed. You know, we are targeting uh, quality venom and uh, the moment you stress the animals, you end up getting them ill or they are sick on one or two ways, then uh, eventually you don't produce that uh, quality venom. That is why we have uh, the basins to give them hiding ways, hiding means whenever they want to, to go inside and uh, feel less provoked because you have been uh, getting the puffer being uh, giving a lot of sound because it is stressed whenever we move close to it. So we try to minimize stress from this animal by creating something which uh, looks like uh, the way they live outside uh, in the bushes. So this section, we have uh, another set of boomslang. As I explained earlier, they come in different color because we tend to collect our snacks from different uh, geographical locations. Uh, and it is um, known that uh, snake uh, venom composition is different uh, depending on it is geographical location. That is why we are not concentrating collecting snakes from one area. So we can get one from coast, another one from western, another one from the Rift Valley, so that when we pull together the venom, we try to have uh, um, one venom which is uh, almost standard. So we have uh, carpet vipers. These are from Paringo, the three, and we have one from Trucana. As well, we have a uh, Gabon viper. So this is uh, equally same as to African Pafada, but these are more restricted to the western side of Kenya. And we mainly find them in uh, Kakamega forest. So they are not uh, widely distributed like the Pafadas. And then we have uh, another set of uh, African Pafada. These are juveniles and these are uh, adults. So coming here, we have uh, snack room three. We house uh, most fast moving snakes for us to work with them easily. So these are red spitting cobras. Uh, as the name suggests, they can uh, attack in two ways. They can spit the venom, like you can see here, as well as they can attack you by biting to inject the venom. So normally whenever they spit the venom, they spit targeting the eye of their intruder or enemy. And the venom has a um, eroding factor that uh, causes you to go blind. And uh, normally what it, uh, we do is uh, once you get blind, we recommend quickly you rinse your eyes with uh, clean water. Uh, in other areas where water is limited, they do advise uh, to use uh, other means like uh, milk is okay. Or alternatively, if it is in a jungle and um, nothing is uh, available like water or milk, a urine can supplement, but uh, we don't recommend people to go doing it because uh, some urine might have an uh, infection. Yeah. So mostly cobra rear up, then uh, try to spread the hood. You can see that. And then uh, if you move close to them and maybe annoy them, they tend to attack. These are African black mambas. We, they come in different color. You can see this one is more of yellowish compared to the other ones, which are more of uh, um, gray ones. Black mambas are known to be Africa's most um, venomous snake. 
and it is one of our long, longest uh, venomous snake we have in Africa. It can reach up to four meters, and as one of you was saying, it is uh, one of the fast moving snakes. So these are common in dry areas like Boringo. We have them in Coast, we have them in Savo, we have them in Kitui, and even uh, if you move northward in Wajir and Tana River, we do have uh, black mambas that are highly venomous. Uh, we have uh, green mambas here. So these are as well highly venomous, and many people tend to mistaken them with commonly seen uh, slender grass snake or green snakes. So with the green mambas, they tend to grow more than a meter, although we have the juvenile ones, but uh, including the juvenile, green mambas are highly venomous. We do also have uh, boomslang, which are green, and the majority of the green uh, snakes are the grass snakes, which don't do as any harm. With this one, they tend to do you harm. So to identify a green mamba, we normally check on the shape of the head, which is slender. Green mambas, highly venomous snakes, and uh, mostly sometimes mistaken for the harmless grass snakes. So the grass snakes are common in island areas and they don't do harm. But for the green mambas, they concentrate in the coastal region. Um, another thing is that um, with the exception of a few isolated areas like Kibwesi Forest, we don't encounter green mambas inland. So sometimes it becomes a challenging uh, thing to uh, distinguish between a green mamba and a grass snake. And we commonly check on the head, shape of the head for the green mambas. For the green mambas, they have a, a slender, long face coffin shape and uh, a long smiling face and it is known to be highly venomous. That is how you check on green mambas. So here we have a black neck spitting cobra. This is more common um, around our place, especially this one was rescued in Ruiru, Kiambu County. If you come to our nearby area in Langata, we have a black neck spitting cobra too. You can find them in Masai Mara as well. You can find them in Naivasha, Western Kenya, and Machakos. They're common. They're active mainly at night and sometimes daytime, uh, but they tend to give way and hide during the day and become more active during the night hours. So we have uh, these two large brown speeding cobra. Uh, they range from the coastal region Inland, you find them in Kitui, Samburu, Baringo, and nearby places. And these are as well highly venomous. They can attack by spitting the venom as well as biting. That is why we give uh, indication to one our client that this snake can spit through an opening. This is another kind of cobras. In Kenya, we have spitting cobras and non-spitting cobras. So we have forest cobras and Egyptian cobras in our collection that don't spit the venom. So this is, these are Egyptian cobras, highly venomous. Uh, they do bite to inject the venom, but they don't uh, spit the venom like the ones I've explained. So this one looks uh, gray or milky. Um, in a way that uh, in a few days it is going to mold or shade the skin. That is why the color has changed. If you can check the eye, it looks milky or gray. Sometimes it gives them easy way to identify that uh, it is going to shade the skin. Most of our collection, we have uh, collected them from uh, snake affected areas in a way that um, Snake encroach human habitats. 
and in a way we try to train people to respond to us quickly like uh, give a call we go in and uh, we collect the snake if it is something that we can utilize let's say it is a medically important snakes we try to retain it here and if it is something that uh, can't assist us we try to transfer it to our mother institution which is the national museum of kenya for touristic purpose or some of them can be released back into their natural habitat but away from the human settlements probably in the national parks or protected uh, areas where they're not likely to do any harm to people. Uh, well, as you have asked, uh, we do help communities around Kenya with a rescue mission in regard to snakes. So whenever a person uh, has a snake in his house or within the garden and it is posing any danger, they do reach us and then we organize for transport, we get to the place, we capture the snake in a safe way, then we can handle it uh, either in our institution or other institution that uh, does the same work. Again, if somebody has been beaten, uh, we do intervene and maybe advise uh, the nearest area where the person can be saved, like uh, we tell him to get the, uh, we tell them to get the patient to the hospital, then we check out if the hospital has no antivenom, we try to get our resources and take the antivenom to save the life. That is why we are doing all this. Um, the lead clinical research activities in Kenya Snake Bite Research and Intervention Center. So my role here today is um, when the team is extracting venom, they are usually, we pray that there are no accidents or emergencies, but just in case, just as a precaution, that is my role here. So to, how do you do, to conduct first aid in case there's an accident or there's an emergency. Okay, we are ready now to extract uh, the venom. Okay, we are ready now to extract uh, the venom from a large brown spitting cobra. This is almost an adult. So I'm being assisted by my colleague Fred and Gotti. So you need to massage the venom glands so that they give out uh, as much as they can. So usually the fangs are positioned in front of the, the jaw, the, the mouth, sorry, and for this one is a front fixed fang for cobras. 
vipers have got a longer fangs. Uh, how much it is big? Yeah? It depends on how much it is big. Okay, Let me concentrate on one thing. Okay, it depends with the size of the body the snake is attacking, the amount of venom, so a portion of this can kill. Yeah, so it is high in lethal in these snakes compared to other snakes. As well the geographical location. Sometimes you can find the same snake within other areas, but the toxicity in that venom is or the proteins is that weak. So after extracting the venom, we normally cover again the parafilm because the snake has already taken bite and then we store this at negative 20. This enables us to preserve our proteins before, like, before freeze drying, which is basically lyophilization. So that's the temperature where we store our venom immediately after extracting it from the snake. So the venom is stored at negative 20 immediately after extraction, after venom extraction before lyophilization process, which is freeze drying, and then which will enable us now to get the venom in powder form for longer preservation. So these are some of our venoms, as I had mentioned. So this is a different, actually this is another snake, just a sample of the venom that has been freeze dried. Yes, and the freeze dried venom in powder form is stored at plus four degrees Celsius.